Salutations crustaceans, I'm Lobster, and today we're going to be reviewing the new for 2022 Lakeland 5502 from the Skyline series. Let's do this. This is the Lakeland 5502 Deluxe from the Skyline series, and it's been updated for 2022 with a new finish over here. This is a matte cherry burst, and we have a new roasted maple neck as well. The 5502 is a staple from the Lakeland Skyline series. It's been around since the early 2000s or late 90s, whenever they started out the Skyline series, and it has been a Lakeland staple for that entire time. Featuring a jazz style pickup in the neck position, this is a hum canceling pickup, and a Music Man style pickup at the bridge position. Paired to this bridge pickup is a three-way toggle switch for us to select the coils. This is not a series or parallel switch. This is, in fact, a coil selector. We're able to select the front half of the pickup, both parts together in the full humbucker, and the rear half. There is hum canceling as well, meaning that if you solo one of the halves, you're not going to get any noise. It's a nice touch. The Skyline series originally had a Bartolini pickup set and preamp, but the new Lakeland pickups, well, they're not that new, but uh, the Lakeland pickups and preamp are somewhat modeled after the Bartolini. We have a three band preamp with a bunch of mid frequencies that we're able to toggle between inside the control cavity. There's a bunch of little dip switches, which are a pain to get to, but we do have the control at our fingertips somewhat in order to uh, change the mid frequency target around a bit. It's a regular three band. We have a treble, mid, and bass control, as well as a master blend and a master volume. For the body here, this is an ash body paired to a quilted maple top. And this is a model exclusive matte cherry burst finish. I think it looks killer with this quilted maple. The bridge that we have here is the signature oval Lakeland bridge. You see this and you know it's a Lakeland. Really nice bridge. We're able to string through the body as well as through the bridge by itself. So we have those options there. The spacing is also 19 millimeters, which is a nice touch. For the neck, this is one beautiful neck here. This is a 22 fret roasted maple, 35 inch scale with a 45 millimeter nut width. We have our truss rod channel right at the heel of the neck here by the body, meaning you don't have to loosen your strings or move them from the nut. You can easily adjust your neck on the go without having to fuss too much. Overall, a very well constructed base. The icing on the cake, however, is up at the headstock. We have the 3x2 tuner configuration, and those are hip shot ultralight tuners. The tuner configuration, plus using those lightweight tuners, means this is an excellently balanced instrument. It will not neck dive on a strap. Now let's go ahead and turn this bass around. Around back, there's several things to note. The burst does not continue on the back. This is just a solid transparent red on the back. Uh, we have a larger, decently sized control cavity, a separate battery compartment, and string ferrules allowing us to string through the body. We also have a five screw neck attachment. This is typical Lakeland style, very secure and very nice. We can also see the back of this very comfortable roasted maple neck. I've always appreciated the Lakeland neck profile, especially their five strings. I always found them to be just super comfortable and easy to navigate and tons of room for activity with the 19 millimeter spacing as well. And up at the headstock, we can see that this is an Indonesian made instrument. This is not part of the USA series. And we also see the back of these hip shot tuners. Very cool. And how much does the Lakeland Skyline 5502 Deluxe weigh? This particular example comes in at 9.3 pounds. Overall, a very nicely weighted instrument for a deluxe good sized five string. I used to have a Lakeland 5502 in high school and I used it for marching band. Uh, it was a 5502 Deluxe, but it didn't have the roasted maple neck. It was a regular maple neck and a uh, three-tone sunburst. In fact, here's a picture of me with that bass. <laughs> and yeah, these Lakelands are definitely a flexible instrument. They can really produce a lot of different tones. Um, and they're well-weighted, making them very uh, usable for like marching band and situations where you're going to be playing on a strap for a long period of time. And that brings us to our final question. How much does the Lakeland Skyline 5502 Deluxe in this current spec cost? This model comes in at $17.39, which is comparable with some American Fenders. However, I think you get a lot of bass here, and this is definitely a contender for a 
one bass to rule them all in your stable. It can do a lot of different tones, and instead of talking about that, let me just show you. You all know what you need to do. Go ahead and hit that like button so my hand will turn back to normal. Thanks. The Lakeland 5502. This brings back memories. This is really one of those basses that, in a mix, can kind of do it all. You have this two pickup configuration with a jazz bass pickup in the neck position and a stingray style pickup in the bridge position. The 5502 features the Lakeland USA electronics. These are the same pickups that you would find in the Lakeland 5594, the USA model as well as I believe the same preamp. What you've heard so far is with the preamp centered and the selector switch in the middle here, meaning we're utilizing the full humbucker in the bridge position. Now, let me just play this one more time with everything centered, and then we'll check out the neck pickup first because that is the simplest one. We got a lot to unpack with this bridge pickup here, so be sure to get your popcorn ready. So let's get started. Here's everything centered one more time. <laughs> instrument. Let's go ahead and pan over to our neck pickup first. We have a hum cancelling J pickup over here in the neck position, very similar to the Bartolini jazz pickups that they used to have. My old 5502 had the Bartolinis and I liked that bass a lot. Let's go ahead and hear what the neck pickup sounds like with everything centered first. <laughs> That's a very nice sounding pickup. Very clear, yet you got some aggressiveness to it. Let's play with this EQ a bit. Let's start by just taking everything all the way down. So we are at full cut with the bass, treble, and mid controls. Take the bass control up to center, leaving everything else cut. Next, let's give that a little boost. Let's take the bass control to about 50% boost. I 
think I'm going to leave that at center while taking the treble up to center as well, leaving the mid scooped. Here's what that sounds like on the neck pickup. sound with that mid scoop. And that does bring me to the mid frequency selection. Unlike most preamps nowadays which either have an analog control via like a knob or some sort of switch like my MTD which has three different mid frequencies to choose from, this has four little tiny toggle switches on a PCB inside the preamp which is inside the control cavity. Meaning you can switch the mid frequency targets however However, you got to do a little bit of digging to get in there. And uh, I think with most modern preamps having that ability externally, I think that Lakeland needs to make some changes there to allow you to select between a few mid frequencies from the outside. I appreciate that they give you so much flexibility with the four different toggle switches. I'd rather have easy access to two or three externally versus having all those on the inside. But that's just my thoughts personally. <laughs> Take that for what you will. Now let's go ahead and take the treble down and the bass control down and just have the mid frequency at center. Take the mid control, boost that to about 50%, see where that takes us. And let's take the treble control up to center as well. Let's center the preamp now and move over to our bridge pickup. The Music Man style pickup over here that has the three-way toggle switch for the coil selection. So that was with the pickup in humbucker mode, meaning both coils here were selected. Let's use this little toggle switch and flip it over to the left, selecting the next side of the pickup. Let's see what that sounds like. it has a different voice compared to the full humbucker and it sounds very different from the bridge coil as well. So the bridge coil is definitely jazz bassy or like 70s jazz bass where you get that kind of honky nasally sound. That... <laughs> so you get that kind of vibe where with the humbucker, 
you kind of get a more Music man -y vibe, and we can kind of use the EQ to bring out that characteristic a bit more. But here's uh, the full humbucker with the EQ centered one more time. Let's boost the treble a little bit and cut the mids about 50%. So 50% treble boost, 50% mid cut, and just a smidge of extra bass. I think even more treble might do the trick. We're gonna bring the treble up all the way, a smidge of extra bass, and a 50% treble cut. Okay, I guess in a mix you could kind of get that, but it sounds a little bit too mellow and a little bit too smooth to get that true Music Man snarl. However, you do get, you know, the ballparky sound, and for all intents and purposes at like a live gig, you could probably pull it off with, with this bass. Now let's get into the meat and potatoes though, and that is both pickups together. We still have access to this three-way toggle and have three different voices that are severely impacted by which coil you choose on the bridge pickup. So let's start out with the neck coil selected on the bridge pickup, both pickups selected. Next, here's both coils selected. And here's the bridge coil selected. slight variations in the character. Overall, I mean, they sound kind of the same, but with the bridge coil selected, you do get a jazz bassy vibe, especially when slapping. <laughs> So to answer that question prematurely, yes, this thing definitely is a slapper. Let's check it out with the humbucker selected in full now. And the neck coil selected. interesting. Uh, I think the neck pickup selected definitely gives you a very distinct change in character versus the bridge pickup, which sounds very similar to the humbucker in a lot of ways. Uh, yeah, so let's play it with a pick now. Why not? Let's grab our pick. <clears throat> so first, I'm just going to pan over to the neck pickup. We're going to leave the EQ centered, and here's our pick. Next, let's add the bridge pickup to the mix. So we have both pickups on together, the EQ is centered, and the bridge pickup is in humbucker mode. Ha <laughs> ha. 
And let's play with the switch a bit. We're going to pan over to the neck coil on the bridge pickup. And flick it the other way, so now we have the bridge coil selected. And finally, let's throw some drums behind this bass. So here are my final thoughts on the Lakeland Skyline 5502 Deluxe in the new 2022 spec with the matte cherry burst and the roasted maple neck. Wow, what a player's bass this is. You have a ton of different tones to pick from, however I do wish the mid frequencies were a little bit more accessible via an external switch versus the toggles in the cavity. My personal opinion though, I find the toggles in the cavity to be a bit inconvenient. Everything else here though is top tier. You have the 19 millimeter spacing and the great neck profile, the awesome neck finish as well that just makes this a joy to play. The matte cherry burst is a gorgeous finish that pairs nicely with this quilted maple top. And we have these Lakeland electronics which can pretty much do it all in a way. I don't think you're going to nail any iconic tones, but for the purposes of sitting in a mix, you can definitely get close enough to where this can do it all, but sound great doing it. You have a lot of boldness and definition in the tones that you get out of this bass. And they're very, I guess, rounded tones, very full tones that sit nicely anywhere you put them. So this is a very usable bass and it really does bring back memories for me of uh, when I was in high school and I had this particular instrument or a similar spec. I think the fact that these have remained mostly unchanged or very little has changed in these instruments in the period that they've been produced and they're still being produced. And I think that's a testament to the quality design here. I mean, this is just such a well-designed bass that's really trying to do it all in a meaningful way without detracting from the playing experience or the tones. I feel like this bass isn't trying to really impersonate any tone in particular, but instead do something all its own while filling many shoes. So I definitely applaud Lakeland for the high quality electronics, great build quality. Everything you see here is just that of a killer professional grade instrument. So what am I going to rate the Lakeland 5502 Deluxe? Ugh. I'm gonna rate this bass. Four claws out of five. The Lakeland 5502 Deluxe is a killer instrument. I just wish that the mid frequency controls were a bit more accessible and I wish maybe it was a little bit cheaper, but I think you're getting what you pay for here. With the uh, price tag as it is, you're getting more than you are with an American Fender. Even though it's made in Indonesia, I don't think that detracts from the quality at all. I believe Lakeland does their QC in-house and these instruments just play so well. They sound great. These folks know what they've doing and they perfected their formula after doing it for what, 30 years? <laughs> I don't know exactly, but Lakeland's been around for a while and they've been a big name in the game for a reason. So great job, Lakeland. You have an awesome instrument here and I can't wait to play this some more. Well, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, everyone. Be sure to like, subscribe, join our Discord channel, and leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think about the Lakeland 5502 Deluxe from the Skyline series. And as always, until we groove again.